negligence or unintentional torts. There are four elements of negligence as defined as a legal concept. The first is duty of care. This means that someone must take a reasonable try at making sure someone can't get hurt from their actions. The next is breach of duty. This means that if you do something that has hurt someone else, you've breached the duty of care. The third element of negligence is factual causation. This is where it has to be proven that negligence happened. The last element of negligence is damages. This is where the jury or courts has to prove how much damage was caused and put a dollar figure on it. Product liability deals with the negligence on the part of manufacturers. Manufacturers must make sure that their design is free from harmful defects, that the product is properly manufactured, the consumer is told how to use the product safely and warned of any risks using the product. It is the responsibility of owners or renters to ensure that no one entering their premises is injured. Invitees and licensees are owed a standard of care. Trespassers are owed no standard of care, but cannot be purposely injured. Children are treated differently. A host is someone who serves alcohol to guests or paying customers. It has been established that commercial hosts have a statutory duty of care to their patrons and others. The recent ruling of the Supreme Court in the Childs v. Zimmerman and Courier case was that the social hosts were not legally responsible. However, the possibility of social host liability was not totally ruled out. Vicarious liability is a legal responsibility for the negligence of another person. Employers can be held responsible for the action of their employees and parents for the actions of their children. Car owners are liable for damages that result from the negligent behavior of anyone who drives the owner's car. A defendant is automatically liable for an injury caused by a dangerous substance or activity even if the defendant was not negligent. Things like fire, vicious animals, toxic waste or fumes. Children or their parents and guardians can be held responsible for their actions. Each case is judged on its own facts. There is no clear law. Children must provide a duty and standard of care expected from reasonable children of a similar age. Parents are not automatically liable for their children's torts. It must be shown that the proper standard of care was not present. Vicarious liability states that parents are liable for accidents caused by children driving the family car, the snowmobile, etc. Parents may also be found liable if it can be shown that they were not properly supervising their children. For example, cases involving fire and guns. The most common defenses against negligence are that the negligence does not exist or the defendant did not owe the plaintiff any duty of care. In the past, if the plaintiff was found to be in any way at fault for the accident, their right to claim damages was denied. Presently, damages are apportioned between the defendant and the plaintiff if both are in some way at fault. The onus is on the defendant to prove that the plaintiff was in some way responsible. The defendant must prove that the plaintiff knew the possible risk involved in their actions. For example, at a sports event, the spectator assumes the risk merely by observing the event. This is also used in cases where passengers were injured by impaired drivers. The onus is on the defendant to prove the plaintiff was aware of the risk. The defendant may escape liability by establishing that the cause of the claimant's injury was an accident rather than any willful or negligent act on his part. An inevitable accident is one which no human foresight could have prevented, an accident which could not have been prevented by the exercise of reasonable care on the part of the defendant. Inevitable accident is a defense in which the burden of proof is on the defendant to show that what happened was an unforeseeable accident. The statute of limitations is a law that specifies the time within which legal actions must be taken. The expiry of the time period is a defense in tort law.
The limitation period differs depending on the law of the province and the type of defendant.